Hi, I'm Megan. I'm Serena. Welcome to One Head, Two Ducks, a grown up theater kids podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to One Hen, Two Ducks. My name is Selena Igwe, and I have our producer and guest for this podcast, Kristen Kidman. Say hello, Kristen. Hi. Hi, everybody. I am going to miss Megan so much today, but I am really happy to be here because I am so excited about our guests. I have been wanting to do this interview forever, and now it's yes. here. Yes. Yes. You guys would not believe who we got on this podcast we got the fabulous the amazing one of the most talented individuals i have seen in this upcoming generation gwen laurel everyone hi thank you so much oh that was like the nicest intro i've ever gotten i mean like you don't even know girl like we were um we were looking at um you know trending topics and and whatnot for um, scheduling our podcast. And and we heard that there was some buzz going on with Bridgerton the musical. So we started to look it up and look at what they were doing. And we're like, okay, okay. We happened to get to your video and I'm like, look at this chick. <laughs> she needs to be oh casting right now because your rendition of, um, of uh, the, I'm sorry, the song, oh my goodness, I'm blanking. The, I think it's just called Penelope Feathering. Yes. Penelope Featherington. That one. Your rendition. We even did um, the Bridgerton episode. You can check it out here. And we even highlighted Gwen's um, performance there. Because we were like, oh my gosh. It was so beautiful. Your voice was so capturing. It was also, we felt the character in that moment. So, um, which, to be honest, with a lot of the other songs, we weren't really feeling. We we, we heard that it was a nice song. It was like, okay, it's a nice song. Mm -hmm. But you took it for us to musical theater. Um, and so we were like, thank you. She needs to be cast. She needs yes. to be cast. Thank so, yes. you so much. Welcome to yes. One Hint Two Ducks. Um, <laughs> and uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself and how you began in this career. Yeah. So um, I've never been a very athletic person. <laughs> so my mom, when I was little, like obviously parents try and like put their kid in an extra curricular sort of thing and they tried soccer and I just hated it so much <laughs> and then they saw a um like an ad in the in the paper for like a community theater production of Beauty and the Beast and um so I, I did that and I was like eight years old and I literally just like have not stopped <laughs> doing shows since then I I just I, I love it so much and I've always loved singing and I've always just been like, I don't know, a sort of, <laughs> my parents say that I always would just make them like sit down and like, just watch me like do random things all around the house. <laughs> um, so I guess I've always been sort of like a performer. I love but, it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I did community theater and then, so um, when it came time for me to go to college, it wasn't really uh, like a it wasn't a question whether or not I was going to go into musical theater or not. My mom immediately just was like, okay, here are the programs. Like, we'll see if you get into any, cause it's just such a toss up. And right. I come from like a really, really small town. Um, so I didn't have access to like a lot of people who I did go to school with had like audition coaches that they had been working with for like years mm -hmm. and had been like perfecting these packages, um, basically like selling themselves, you know, as a fully fledged performer mm -hmm. to the college where you're supposed to learn how to be a fully fledged performer, <laughs> yes. which is insane to me. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> but uh, luckily I, I got into the Boston Conservatory and I spent four years there and I, I loved it. There's problems like with every single musical theater program, but overall I really liked it and I love Boston. Yeah. I so. also love Boston, so I'm geeking out right now. So. <laughs> yes, it's the best. What area, have you like lived there? I go to Cape Cod every summer. So I spent a lot of she time does. in Boston. Nice. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. She yes. does, she does. I was like right around the Fenway area. Oh, nice. 
Yes. Oh. So, um, with the pandemic and just everything happening, with shows shut down, with not getting that opportunity to actually get up on stage and perform, like, how has it, like, made you feel as an artist? Like, do you, have you been able to do your craft, like, off, not to the, off to the side, but, like, not on the stage? Like, how has it impacted you? Oh, gosh. It's, like, so, I feel like the pandemic had so many, like, layers. Mm-hmm. Like, at first, it didn't seem like it was going to be a big deal. Um, like, I just remember in, like, the end of 2019 and 2020, I was still going to, like, plenty of auditions. And even when things shut down, everybody was like, okay, it's going to be two weeks. Mm-hmm. Or, like, it's going to be three weeks. So we're going to be doing these self-tapes. And there were still tens of like submission requests coming out every day. Right. So at first I was just like, okay, well this is great because like, I don't have to go to work. I can just focus on making these self tapes, which I totally was like kind of uncomfortable with at that point. And I was like, cool, learning a new skill. (laughs) Love it. And things will be back in three weeks. Can't wait. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And then Obviously, it became very clear (laughs) very quickly um, that that was not going to happen. So, yeah, I I definitely felt lost, um, not in that I was like, I want to give it up or anything. I never had the thought once in the pandemic of like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, which I know, like, no shame to anybody who did feel that because there were so many emotions happening. Mm-hmm. But it was more like I feel lost in the fact that I feel like what I'm, like, meant to and love to do, there's going to be no space for it anymore. And then what am I going to do? Because that's the only thing that I really feel like I'm good at and that I love. hmm And, you know, that's, like, the thought that gets you through your day job and the survival job and everything. It's, like, I'm doing this. I'm having an okay time, but this is not my career. Right. And then all of a sudden, not only, like, was your career not an option, but also your survival job was just, like, gone and you're left with, like, nothing. (laughs) Um. But then I got into TikTok and that was helpful. Yes! <laughs> TikTok became, we were actually just having this conversation prior to pressing record. Um, yes. And uh, <laughs> while while me, Megan, and Kristen have been um, <clears throat> struggling with the TikTok, we tried. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we did try. We are We old. kind of stopped. <laughs> we were very old. And TikTok requires a lot of energy and and time and whatnot, and it, nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody. Well, they a lot of people got time for that. But um, yes, Gwen, please tell us like how. I mean, I can't even imagine. You know, especially as we had just began our TikTok, like we have tiny little you know um, followings and whatnot, but yours went viral. What happened? Was how was that like? How was that whole like process? And how do you feel about it now? Like, <laughs> it was insane. I definitely like became a nightmare to my friends and family for that like twenty four to forty eight hours, which is like so embarrassing to say. But like, I've never experienced anything like it before. Honestly, still have no idea. <laughs> how it happened i i put on a cute i I was like oh like maybe somebody will see this besides my like five friends <laughs> slash followers that i had at the time so i was like oh let me put on a nice shirt and i did it and i just threw through like threw it together and immediately like 20 to 30 minutes later it was like i was refreshing and it was like nine plus notifications, 20 plus notifications, 50 plus notifications. And I was like, what What? is 
happening? Like, what did I do? <laughs> and also, like, the fear that, because I'm just, like, naturally a very anxious person. So I was like, when are the haters going to come? Right, <laughs> right, right. That was the thing, too, is I was like, oh, my God, like, people are going to hate me. <laughs> Which is so silly, because, like, it's just singing, you know? Like, it's, 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 yeah, it's so lighthearted. I got a singular hate comment <laughs> out of all of them, though, where I feel, so I feel, like, pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and whoever that hater was, it's just out of jealousy because clearly oh. person. clearly person clearly you are in the wrong um <laughs> yeah because i mean by the time we got to you and we discovered you you were already quite big and um you had so many views so many follows so many you know instagram and then so the fact that you contacted that that you allowed me to contact you because i was like oh i felt like a celebrity contact i was like oh my gosh Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> no, not even. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So, as a TikTok, specifically on the TikTok side, because we've had this conversation before of um, of Broadway and theater, you know, almost like moving into the new century. Um, because of course, we know we we always have our traditionalists, and we will always prefer theater to be live and you know in person and whatnot but this is a new generation and um and tiktok specifically with ratatouille issued in a new era if you will or a new possibility of an era mm -hmm. so what do you think as a tiktok artist like um how it should be done creatively and i and i'll expand just a little bit more on that like um for example yeah. we had ratatouille that more used it as collaboration where um they said oh here's an idea and then they took songs and and things from all different parts of the community theater p community and put in a musical together then you have bridgerton where it's just two specific people that wanted to write and direct only and just wanted it to be like a fan page so um, what do you think would be the best and as, as, as a TikTok creative? And what do you usually gravitate towards? Um, I, I think that when, when I think about like collaborating specifically on TikTok, um, the one thing that I love about it so much is that it's a completely democratized platform where anybody like if you have your duets on, anyone can duet it, which I really like because in the real world, like it, you know, in real life, not in the real world, TikTok <laughs> is the real world, it's yeah. real people. Yeah. <laughs> but um, in like the, the theater community, sometimes it's hard to even like get in the room to, to have someone be able to hear you sing mm -hmm. the material, even mm -hmm. if you're like, I know I could crush it, like, I know that they would like this, but I can't break through. So I love that on TikTok, um, it's like crowdsourcing and it's sort of like the people's platform as well, as far as like getting people to like, they can comment, the people can choose mm -hmm. who, like, you know, their, their favorites or whatever. Um, and like, you can have more than one and be like, wow, look at all these amazing people and how many different interpretations we can see of like one one little 30 second clip that this person came up with so i think yeah. that's amazing um i think that it's definitely good for developmental stuff i personally at this point not that it i'm not saying that it couldn't ever happen but i'm not sold necessarily right now on tiktok itself as the performance form mm -hmm. um as far as like theater, like if, I don't think necessarily that TikTok is theater. I don't know if it has the capacity for that. Um, I just don't think I've seen it because it, it's like the, the timing, like the mm -hmm. the time is very hard and yeah, the you're one, shooting on one an minute. iPhone. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I do think that especially with stuff like Ratatouille, where you get to collaborate and then maybe put forward um, a show. Like, I love that. 
I do, like, part of me wishes that with the Ratatouille concert that they cast more of the TikTok people in it. Yes. Um, yes. Because I think that, and this is not, I'm, like, no shade to anyone who was involved, but I think that Broadway itself has a little bit of an elitism yeah. thing. And I was like, wait, so we're not going to cast any of the creators that did all the work on this? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. And you're not... Yeah. So, and like, no shade. No shade at all to the people who were involved. They did great, but... It's still it's, like, that was their opportunity, you know? like Right, like that was their chance. Mm-hmm. Right. Kind mm-hmm. of. And you can sprinkle in stars. Yes. You don't need a stacked cast. Yes. Um, to get people to come see it. Agreed. Agreed. Um, and as far as Bridgerton goes, I was personally really excited with them saying that they were going to do a concept album and, like, cast it. Mm-hmm. Of course, like, duh, I wanted to audition. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, as every single person that made a TikTok, like, exactly. wanted to audition. <laughs> But um, I understand how it would have been difficult, but it, uh, I don't know, it definitely, it's like slowed down a little bit for me because it's more of like on the outside, like we're all on the outside getting like like peeks into their Mm -hmm. process. And I don't really feel like we are a part of the process anymore. Right, right. But that's fair. I mean, it's their musical. It is the, yeah, they exactly. They want. Exactly. But they really should cast you. But yes, it is their musical. <laughs> they can do what they want. But they are, it's slight. I mean, no shit. I love them. They're doing a great job. But they're awesome. Um, they. It would be a missed opportunity not to have you. And I'm not just saying that because you're there, but I'm just saying because clearly the fanship agree. Like you, you brought Penelope to the state you know you brought her to that moment and to to not utilize like as a director i'm i'm looking at, at this on, on a director's end you know like mm-hmm. if i have someone like uh, maybe i didn't even consider them but if someone over here knocks it so out of the park that already they have all these these fanship and everything it would i would be honestly i would be an idiot not to cast that person and go with someone random like yeah. I would be an idiot I, I would not only would that the, does that person already prove to me that they can already do the role but then all those fans come along with it now I'm getting you yeah. know all that all that hype with it so to not do that would literally be a misfortune to the whole entire production um but I I get it they're they're doing their thing I get it and you know I'm definitely the type of person too if I'm working on something and I say it's mine and I don't, well, actually, I'm not that type of person. But if I did, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, like, they said, too, like, they're working on the concept album right now. And there's, like, potential for other iterations. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I would really love to see, like, so, so much is, like, one of those 54 Below-esque, like, concerts where like eventually when people are allowed to meet again is like just like a straight up let's all wear like fun like yeah. themed inspired clothes let's do like some cute minimal staging and wear <laughs> fun wigs and like sing just like sing through it cast it and sing through it like I feel like that would also make so much money yes I'd be this Gwen I wanted to ask you like kind of going along with this still so me and Selena and Megan, we all watched Bridgerton and we absolutely loved it. Maybe want to read the book. And when we watched your video, we got this sense of Penelope Featherington in one minute watching you than we had seen like in any other like video or any like fan appreciation, anything. Can you talk about like what Penelope is to you? Like how you were able to connect with her so well? Just That's a good question. Song and- that is a good question. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, first of all, I love Nicola Coughlin, like, period. I'll watch, like, anything that she's in, and I've always, I mean, she's so stunning, but I've always been, like, oh, she, she's one of those people for me where it's, like, oh, she kind of looks like me. Yeah, um, so, yeah, you could be her uh, Yeah, or I kind of look like her, <laughs> more like, but, um, 
I don't have a ton of people in like the entertainment industry where I feel that way about them where I'm like oh that is in like body face all of it like that looks like me and so when I when I put on the show and I saw the character that she was playing in general it's like exactly who I was in high school pretty much um and then of course like there's still a little bit of that in me now as well I think I've, I've gotten more confident um but I thought that for like the first time I was seeing someone who was like accurately representing what it meant to be not like the pretty mm -hmm. skinny like whatever diamond of the season mm -hmm. yeah um so because i mean and i don't want to be like sad it's not like a sad thing it's just like i totally got the like girl who's in love with her best friend and he like doesn't even see her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um also, I didn't think that she herself was a sad character. I never once thought that she was, like, yeah. pathetic. No, no. Which I no. really, really appreciated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I enjoyed how she acted when she felt hurt. It wasn't just, like, a sitcom-y thing of, like, Oh, ha ha, look at the sad friend who never gets the guy and she just is sitting outside on the swing like, Oh, I guess it's yeah. meant to be. No. Like, I actually liked when she, uh, like, tried to tell Colin about Marina and all that stuff. I was like, of course she would. Yeah. Because she's, like, desperately in love with him. Um, also her outfits. Yeah. <laughs> she was, like, she very was superficial. Hot. And I was so proud of the directors and the casting people for, for casting her because I think she was an excellent choice for that role. And she did a phenomenal job. And they didn't typecast her. And and, and that was and I think that was Bridgerton's beauty period is that they didn't typecast anybody. And everybody we found where in a time period especially that where many of us shouldn't be there or shouldn't be represented, we were. Mm -hmm. And it feels so good to be like, I'm not only represented, but I'm represented without typecasting. You know, like, like she got right. to like be- celebrated. Yes, celebrated. You know, she got to be yeah. her authentic self without being the typecaster that you were talking about. And, you know, all those, you know, African-American characters didn't have to be the slaves. And, you know, like, yeah. and all these, these different types of people um, could be their authentic selves and it threw me off at first, but then I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> right. I love that so much because yes. it's like, that's, that's honestly how it should be like race, gender, yes. everything, body type, whatever is like, it takes the audience approximately like two seconds and they're like, huh? Hmm. And then they speak and they're like, cool. Cool. Yes. Like that's it. That's it. That's all it needs to be. But it just needs a chance, and I'm and I'm glad that Bridgerton did it and was like, hey, this just needs an opportunity, and because you're right. Like after the first few, like a minute, not, not even a minute, you get over it right. and you accept that this is what it should be. I we should be casting blind. We shouldn't be. I mean, I'm, I guess unless you're telling a really serious autobiography, then maybe. But then Hamilton yeah, I mean, did, and it was a little off. So, <laughs> so I mean, yeah. I mean, it just there. But there, specifically in us as creative people, we need to bring the creative back in. And I think when with with a lot of the modernism of film, especially after like probably the 1960s when they got rid of that code and they could do whatever they want, we almost got we fell too into realism um, to the yeah. point where we lost yeah. artistry. Um, and I think this new generation of art artists and creatives are bringing back that artistry and saying, you know what, 
it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we're just t- trying to tell a story. Who cares who's in it and what they're playing? If it if it lends to the t- story, then let it let it be. Um, or I mean, as long as it's not taking away from the story, then let it be. Yeah. Plus, I the love characters that. that I feel like people like the most were Simon and Penelope. You know, two like untraditional actors taking on these big roles, and those are the most talked about yeah. roles. That's they true. Fascinating to watch on scene. They really were. I, I think that I think that people are also in this same vein. Just something that I've been thinking about a lot today, specifically with the. Um, did you guys see the Little Shop of Horrors reopening announcement? Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I saw a well, lot of them, but not that one. <laughs> yeah, no, there, it's hard to start keeping track. <laughs> um, Little Shop announced that they are going to be reopening on Broadway, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But um, they chose Jeremy Jordan to play Seymour Krelborn, which he is um, a fine man. Yes. And that is one of those things I feel like it doesn't maybe lead to the story. Yeah, yeah, it it doesn't make sense for the story. Exactly. He's just so hot. Right. And, like, and that character's I've not. I've seen him, right, I've seen him, like, act, like, schlubby, but it's like you can't act your way out of that bone structure. No, so, no. And, 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 and it's, it's true, it's true, because then why does he have so hard, or why does he, you know, uh, um, oh my gosh, I, I've lost my words. Uh, why does he then settle for, um, what's her face and you know like all these things like it you're right there's a point where it does have to make sense for the story and not take away because because then you're not serving the story and then that's like taking away the point of even doing it in the first place <laughs> right right i think that people people's views on casting in general um because I've seen a lot of specifically TikToks of people being like, why? Right. Why is this gorgeous, straight, white man playing Seymour Krelborn when we have, um, what's his name, George Salazar, who just mm-hmm. did it at the Pasadena mm-hmm. Playhouse mm-hmm. with M.G. Rodriguez, and we're going to pick Jeremy Jordan? Like, right. It's not that he can't do it. I'm sure he's going to be great, but it's like, is that elitism again? Exactly. It's like, why don't we give somebody else a chance? Not because it's like a handout, not not out of pity. It's nothing like that. It's just like, we've seen you do so many things. And I honestly don't think that you're necessarily the best person for this role. So why are you there again? It's true. It's Getting true. Getting the whatever $5,000 a week paycheck or whatever it is. Yeah. It is true. Like it, 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 and and now we have these creators that, um, especially those who are, of us that are millennials, we, or even Gen Zs, um, we're tired of the weight. We're tired of a, of of make of putting ourselves into somebody else's hands and giving them um, authority to tell us whether we're good enough or not. You know, that's why we have Lynn, who was like, okay, fine, you won't you won't make a show for Hispanics, I'll do it. You know, or, you know, Mm -hmm. like people who are just doing it or you like, fine, I'll make my own, you know, career or not, well, not career, but you know, I'll, I'll start creating on my own. If you're not going to give me a chance, then I'll still create, like, you can't stop me. Um, And I think that, I think a lot of the executive producers and those higher ups are honestly stuck in an older generation mindset um, where they just want to play it safe and only have these, these people that they, that they assume would sell, but um, totally, it's not necessarily totally. tr- true. Um, I, I, I believe that we are in a place where we want to see new faces. We're, we're, we're glad to see the old faces and it's great, but then at the same time, we're Absolutely. like, who else is out there? Well, I want to see new talent. I want to like, you know, see new people. And So I mean, do you think going forward, like, does, does Broadway need star power? Like, do you think Broadway can like refresh mm-hmm. and get some new faces and new people in there or do they need these names that people know just to get people in the door like i think people are so excited to go back to theater mm-hmm. like do they need to see the stars or would they just be happy to see the shows that they want to see i think that what people 
at least in my like circles, mm -hmm. what I'm seeing people clamor for is not star power, but like diversity and representation on stage. Yeah, yeah. That's what people want to see. Yeah. Um, like for example, like I, I personally won't be going to see Jagged Little Pill, um, since the whole like trans erasure right, thing. Right. Like I, I won't be going to see it because I think it's just such a missed opportunity mm -hmm. and the whole situation is long and arduous to, to talk about but um, like say for example like if they cast a trans actor in that role like like everyone will go mm -hmm. everyone who has like been put through the ringer as far as being told that oh no, like Joe was never a non-binary right. slash trans character, all that sort of stuff. They would be like, thank you. Finally, like you're mm -hmm. listening to the people that you have hurt. Let me go support. Um, yeah, and obviously, I mean, there's so many shows, the statistics and everything are wild as far as like race breakdowns on Broadway and who yeah. has lead roles versus ensemble roles and roles in general um yeah i think they're just uh, it needs to be a more diverse space and yeah. i think that theaters would be pleased to see how ticket holders would respond to that i don't think that we need say for example an all-white production of the music man with two stars at the helm Right. Yeah. Right, right. So and I mean, I know some productions are trying. Um, I know Phantom casted the first Black Christine. Um, yes. And yeah. so I know some are, are trying. But then, like, it makes me kind of... Um, we, we, we interviewed um, one of our... Actually, it was actually one of our old high school teachers. But he said something extremely poignant um, that I'll never forget. And I really do think and I hope that the execs are doing this because it's one thing to just cast people just to cast people it's another thing to add them to your boardroom and mm -hmm. we yeah. need we need diverse decision makers um not only diverse ca because because the cast can only go so far you know, and they and they and and then it feels like to me sometimes it's like a gimmick like okay well this is just you know so okay i'm gonna just throw it in but but whenever the the diversity starts at the top then we have diverse shows completely um, and uh, we are thinking about other cultures and other peoples and other what they need and what they desire and what they want instead of the same type of people assuming, oh yeah, this is what the blacks want. Oh yeah, this is what the LGBTQ community want. Oh, this is what this right. people want. You know, instead of assuming if you have people that are there that can say, no, this is what we want. This is what we need. These are the type of stories that we want told then diversity comes easily because it trickles down. Um, yeah. But honestly, it, it kind of irritates me in a sense on the African-American end of, um, of it feeling like getting handouts from white old men. Here you go, little yeah. black person, you get to, you know, it's, it's another, I don't know, it just feels, it just feels um, uh, still a little oppressive to me. Um, because we're still, to me, it still doesn't mean equal, equal equality. It just means like, right. oh, the white man's giving us some cornbread today. Yay. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. No, I totally. Um, but if yeah. but if it starts at the top, then we know that there's a mutual respect. And, and then it's not just, you know, that. Um, and I think this across the board, not only from Africans, American, African Americans, but across the board of all different diversity, I think that's what needs to happen. Um, or else it just yeah. feels like we're just being um, products or just like, like we're, they're not buying into us. They're just trying to up themselves. Like, well, this is what, I just want to make more money. So this is for me instead of, no, this is for the community. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I went on a tangent. <laughs> no, 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 no. I totally agree. Yeah, I think that that's why, because there's a whole like, boycott Broadway movement that's going on right now and I yeah it's definitely not like going back 
quickly to the Jeremy Jordan thing. Like that's mm-hmm. not like his fault. Yeah, that's yeah, not, yeah. He's not. He's not the one making the decisions. It is the people who are in charge. Um, and because of that, I think what I would love to do and what I would encourage everybody to do, especially those not in New York City or even if you are, is to like invest in smaller theaters and those communities because those communities are easier they're they're just they're more transparent first mm-hmm. of all it's mm-hmm. easier to see who is at the top you can talk to these people they aren't hiding in their yes. like <laughs> yes. their big buildings with their assistants <laughs> and all that stuff um and it's easier to enact change yeah on that level um and to feel like you are a part of something whereas right now it is very difficult. I mean, I was at the March on Broadway um, a couple weeks ago, and we marched from Columbus Circle all the way down Broadway. Um, and there were so many people there, but like even so, it just feels huge. Like Broadway is a huge, like almost like corporate thing. Yeah, it's a money making yeah. machine, and. Yeah, it's it, exactly like you were saying. I agree. It needs to it needs to happen at the top, but it's so hard to like mm-hmm. make a dent or even know if you're being heard. Yeah, so are you, I'm I'm totally with you. Are you involved in this activism work then? Like, are these like marches and things things that you're doing? I have been to the marches. I follow people on Instagram. I am in no way like I am much more like a listener, and I support in any way that I can as far as like mutual aid and all of that and and as far as like try and keep up with the Instagram lives you know (laughs) try and keep up to date read the articles and everything um but I personally don't really feel like my voice is one that should be like speaking on all of these things for a multitude of reasons so like it's weird because I, I care and I am involved in the activism, but like I would feel weird calling myself an activist. I don't know yeah. why, <laughs> but especially in this, in this sphere, it's like also like I would love to be a part of the Broadway community, but like at this point, I'm just like auditioning. Right. <laughs> I, right. Have, I am in no way like a member say as like all of the speakers there were mm-hmm. and we're speaking to their experience i'm there to yeah. like support and uplift Does that make sense? yeah i love that <laughs> i love that. That, that that totally makes sense it, <laughs> yeah i love that and i can tell that's that's who you are you you are very um understanding person and and i love that you listen um you seem to be you listen to people and you care about them from the heart of your heart and that's that's i think that's an act of it right i mean without even you don't have to be chanting to 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 want change and and i i i know that i I just feel it in you and i can see it in you and i see it on your posts like um that you are a a very amazing person from the inside out um thank you another reason why you should hire her (laughs) yeah reason number 517 you can count people. You can count. Um, so just, we, I can appreciate that you, you you obviously are researching these issues. You understand and you're empathetic and you care and you're not performative about it. You know, like yeah. you're being an ally without just saying like, hey, look at me as I show that I care. You know, you're actually yes. out there caring and being an ally. Like, I love that. Like, oh, look, I care, everyone. I care. Right, right, right. I mean, I feel like I learned so much over the pandemic just about everything like that it's like I don't know it was overwhelming at first for sure as far as like because there is so much like white fragility white guilt and that can be applied to all these other Mm -hmm. issues as well um and you know at first I was like oh my god I gotta do everything and I gotta tell everybody that I'm doing everything that we know that I'm doing everything because I was so like I because I am like an empathetic person but then I feel like I've learned that that doesn't necessarily help anybody but myself. Right. Right. So, right. What can I do that's like helpful to the people that actually need help? Because mm-hmm. as far as like the world goes, I'm I'm set. I'm very you know I'm very lucky that I'm able to to live here 
but I'm able to like rent studio space with a friend yeah. like once yeah. a week. Like all of that is privilege. All of that is privilege. And I a hundred percent recognize that. So it's like, what can I do to try and like spread that, spread that around? I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I mean, I could talk to you all day. Every yeah, this day. is so nice. <laughs> all day, every day. Um, but I already stalk you enough on it, on, on Instagram and TikTok. So um, if you do <laughs> not follow her on the Instagram, TikTok, I don't know if you have a Facebook, but all the other, all the social media. Yeah. Okay, but it, we'll definitely follow her. <laughs> we'll have her link right here. Um, so you end in the description so you can check those. You're, you're going to want to, guys, especially those TikToks. <laughs> Listen to her sing. Um, casting directors, call her. <laughs> please Put hire her in me. Please call this. Hire woman. her, please. Um, <laughs> uh, because um, Gwen is one that that needs to be. She's just that type of person that that needs to be out there. Um, Gwen, thank you for creating and thank you for <laughs> being an ally. Just thank you for this interview and everything. You're a fantastic yes, person. I like so you. Much. Oh my god! Thank you for having me. This has been like so centering and lovely, and y'all are so complimentary. I just feel. <laughs> Bless, I'm like glowing. <laughs> she is, guys. <laughs> she actually is. But we are too. We are too. Like, I, I so. thought the glow was just you, but I mean, we'll go ahead and pat on our backs. You're, you're welcome. Yeah. So throw some glitter on that. Um, but yes, I thank you so much, um, everyone, for watching and listening. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.